Um, and so, uh, welcome everybody to uh, the 47th um, Cultural Majlis uh, coming from uh, Paris, where I am uh, based uh, now. Um, my name is uh, Sultan Saud Al Qasmi. I am your host uh, for uh, for this uh, evening. Over the next hour, we will take uh, a trip around uh, the history and uh, the beautiful artworks of our uh, dear guest. Uh, Sit Hind Nasser, who's joining us from Amman. Uh, I will not introduce her because the entire presentation is an introduction, uh, maybe to the tip of the iceberg of all the great work that uh, Sit Hind has produced over the past um, uh, years. And so I'm very excited to begin. I will uh, begin in one minute. I need to unmute, I need to unpin myself. There we go. Okay. Sit Hind, I will be sharing the presentation um, and I'm hoping that, okay, I'm hoping that people will be allowed in automatically. Very well, we are beginning. <laughs> Very good. Tayyib, uh, thank you so much for uh, uh, being the guest tonight. I think I would like to begin with this quote, which I will read very, very briefly. This is a quote by our dear artist, uh, Hind Nasser, who says, my journey in art embraces a, a variant of my own. I create my own reality. It carries me to different levels of perception. My experimentation with colors and forms is endless. It's a search that raises questions rather than it gives answers. It's a quest about the origins, the beginnings, the infinite, the parallel universe, the quintessential life and my life. Sitind, this is a very deep, deep meaning I, uh, uh, quote. Uh, you're also a thinker in addition to being an artist. Well, first of all, I would like to thank you, Sultan, for inviting me to this prestigious uh, cultural majlis. I'm uh, happy to be online with you tonight. And uh, I'm very far from being a philosopher. But uh, I always question things around me, including my art and what I'm doing. And this is a summing up. Uh, uh, I wrote this thing in my last exhibition that was at Sohalellas at Wadi Finan mm -hmm. last uh, December. And uh, I was thinking, what am I doing? Uh, in this exhibition, I felt that what you have already read uh, is a summing up of my whole work. Thank you so much. And thank you for keeping the answers uh, brief. Uh, we have so much to go through today. <laughs> we will begin, uh, sit in with uh, these beautiful images, your childhood, the early years. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this picture on the left that we're looking at? Uh, well, this is with my parents and my siblings, except my little sister, Rabab, who is on the right. She was not born then. It was a trip to Lebanon, and uh, my parents were always keen on taking us around during holidays and showing us as much as possible in nature, in archaeology, in uh, the countries we visit, and there were not so many countries anyway, but uh, we were a, a, a family that went around together during the school holidays. It, it appears as though you were a very close family. I, I want to share a story and say that uh, the picture on the right, you do not appear in this photo, but you wanted to include your sister Rabab, and that's why yes. we added her. So Rabab is here. I want her to know that. <laughs> yes, of course, I can't uh, exclude her. She was not born in the, in the first picture. She was born later on, and she could be easily my daughter. Mashallah, I mean, there is a big difference in age between the eldest and the, and the youngest. Rabbi Allah Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sithin, this is a, a really wonderful, beautiful uh, photo. Um, this is your graduation. Can you tell us more about this? Well, the, I was studying at the Sisters of Nazareth. Uh, it's a school that teaches uh, three languages, Arabic, English, and French. And uh, my mother insisted that we go there and learn the things that uh, the sisters, the nuns would teach at the time, and they, they still do. 
And for the graduation, it happened to be Sharif Nasser who graduated as, who later on became, after nine years, <laughs> became my husband, late Sharif Nasser bin Jamil. And he is the headmistress and uh, the Motran in the middle when he was, uh, I was receive, receiving my high school certificate. Uh, is this the first time you met the late uh, Sharif Nasser? Yeah, of course, I wouldn't meet him. I was uh, very young and he was in the army, he was still quite young, but um, our lives were very different. <laughs> Wonderful. And this is your graduation photo on the right? No, that is from the university on the right. Okay. And which university did you go to? Beirut College for Women. Now it is called uh, Lebanese American College, uh, University. Okay, we will be talking a little bit about Lebanon in a few uh, seconds, actually. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us more about this visit? This is a, an image showing your parents in Lebanon? Yes, uh, of course, it was a great event for any student uh, living uh, as a boarder. When the parents come to visit and they take you out for lunch, for dinner, make shopping for you, get you stuff back from home, it was something great. But when you put this, this picture in particular, as I was astonished and I couldn't remember from where you took it. And I looked at the photo behind me and said, my God, this is like my, some of my latest works. I worked with white and black. Oh, that's fantastic. Really astonished. It's a, it's a beautiful picture. Uh, Thank you. Sitind. Thank you. Um, Sitind, this is um, well, maybe one of the early images you have of uh, yourself with your um, husband. This is after you got married. Is that correct? Yes, of course. And, yeah. I uh, would is... walk with him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you tell us what this uh, event was? It was an official dinner at the Royal Palace. And uh, at that time, we used to dress up like this and uh, to be seated in, 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 as an, in, in an official way. So we were going in, uh, inside the palace then. Uh, Sitend, I don't know if this is something that you would like to talk about, but the dresses that you have, they, they recur, they come up a few times. Do you remember who, where you got this dress from? They're so beautiful. Well, uh, most of my long dresses, these evening dresses I bought in Lebanon, the designer was uh, Madame, the famous Madame Jenny. She was specialized in long evening dresses and uh, wedding dresses as well. Okay. She my wedding dress as well. Fantastic. Okay, wonderful. Do you have these dresses still? This I gave to my... Uh, Little niece, because I can't fit in it, but I don't think she ever wore it. And some of them I have, but probably, most probably, I will not put them then. Well, I, I hope they are safely kept wherever they are. They are safely kept, don't worry. Wonderful. Uh, Sit Hin, uh, tell us about this beautiful picture on the left showing uh, uh, the late uh, King Hussein, and I believe this is Queen Ali, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That occasion was, uh, we used to have in the family a beautiful occasion. Uh, when we have a newly born baby, we have something we call tasmi, naming ceremony in English. And then uh, His Majesty will come and then uh, another sheikh would come and he would read, he would carry the baby and uh, read some verses uh, read some verses from Quran and give the name to the newly born. And eventually, Sayyidna, late Sayyidna, God bless his soul, became the one who would do this event. And that was when I had my eldest daughter, Nofa. Wonderful. And oh, you are in the house. image on the right. This is image, your, yourself with? With my mother, my late mother. Then she was coming with me. Very well. Thank you. Once again, I, uh, I really admire your taste in, uh, in style, but we will not dwell on this for too long. Thank you. I, I see here that you are uh, steering uh, a boat. Is that right? Yes. Uh, my husband was very fond of uh, the sea. One of his hobbies, he uh, used to go very, very often to Aqaba. 
and uh, we go fishing, swimming, diving, name it. But it was a very nice outing and of course very relaxing for him with all the responsibilities he was carrying. Uh, this is here, these are images of you, I think, um, uh, newly, you're a mother here, this is maybe the 1970s, is this correct? Uh, this is, uh, the first one on the left is 76. Mm -hmm. My uh, second daughter was born in 76, and that is with uh, their late father, Nof and uh, Zainab. Uh, it was in his office, in, in, in the house, in the office where he used to have his meetings. In the second one, I'm with the, the newly born Nasser, you know, you know Nasser yourself, and uh, here is Nofa and Zainab and myself. Uh, Sitind, I would like to ask you a little bit about um, your late husband and uh, um, his role as a father. He's also an official. Um, can you tell us about his personality, how he was? Um, was he, uh, well, Sultan, if you ask people in Jordan, they have a great, uh, they reveal his name and his uh, um, yes. things that he did to our country. He was a real uh, support for, for his, uh, for late uh, King Hussein, uh, his nephew. He was the uncle, but they were almost the same age, a difference of six years. And uh, he, if you want to think about, about the history of Jordan, you would think about the Sharif Nasser, the role he had in the army and stabilizing the country for at least 25 years. And uh, well, that tough guy for the army, he needed to be tough. We had so many enemies against Jordan and we were in the middle of all these uh, revolution and uh, socialism and uh, these things. Uh, so he, he had to do his job at the time. Of course, he had to have this image. He was very loyal to his work. So he would be at the top of the work at four o'clock in the morning. And he was dedicated for the love of the country and uh, King Hussein. At home, he was a completely different person. He was very soft. He couldn't hear a child crying. It was very annoying. If any child, a baby cries or something, <laughs> it wasn't allowed. <laughs> Uh, so he was kind at home and very friendly, of course, and uh, normal, but very soft heart. Thank you so much, Sitin. Uh, Sharif. I might ask you also here about you now in the 80s. You're already painting, you're drawing, you're creating, but you're also a new mother. How did you balance these two? Uh, careers that you you cherish them both obviously they're important to you well uh, sultan the question of uh, how do you manage you always have many hours in the day i managed to be a mother a wife and then to many cultural activities and for uh, my country as well as painting and later princess Fakhrinissa used to tell me please and stop doing this concentrating on your work and I tell her, Siti, look, I'm working. And she would see that I was seriously working. And then she says, okay, my darling. She always used this word, okay, my darling. He sees good result of my work. Then I could handle all these things at the same time. That's wonderful. We will be speaking more about uh, Fakhr Nisa in a, uh, in a few uh, minutes. But I'd like to maybe begin here uh, with your own career. Uh, post-marriage, you started doing a lot of cultural activities. This is a, an important event in your life, the handicraft exhibition. Can you tell us why? Yeah, in fact, I started these cultural things even before I got married. And then after I got married, my husband supported me in doing these activities, and he was encouraging because he, he, realized, he knew that uh, uh, what I'm doing is very necessary for uh, my country, for the history of my country, and for the future. 
and the first one on the left. Uh, here we started uh, a big research about the traditional handicrafts in Jordan. Mm -hmm. My great, um, how would I say, uh, distress, I would say, a disappointment. There were just very, very few uh, craftspeople still alive, and their children, their offsprings, wouldn't want to take it as a career. Of course, they are not selling, they are not making a living. They wanted to study something else and uh, try to make a living out of that. So I worked with, uh, I'm sure you know, uh, with that power. We worked together hand in hand. My husband donated a car for us to make lottery and we collected a lot of money. <coughs> and then <coughs> we started making, <coughs> sorry, the first exhibition for uh, traditional handicrafts. And to our surprise, Hundreds, I would say thousands of people came to the exhibition. It was at the Intercontinental, the first new big hotel uh, in Amman. And we extended the exhibition. Instead of two days, we extended it to uh, a whole week. And people were pouring in to see that we have handicrafts. We should pay attention to this. Then we started making a center. And that, in that center, we were trying to uh, uh, <clears throat> modernize a bit the handicraft, not a bit, to modernize it, to make new uses for whatever we used to have for 100 years, so that it will fit with our present time and the present days. And, uh, and of course, we were marketing these things through marketing we initiated uh, the idea for people, young people, that they can do the handicrafts, at the same time, uh, make a living out of it. And I know you are aware of uh, the standard of our handicrafts in Jordan. Thank God we have reached a good level uh, in that area. And then the second one is another activity. It is about children. It, uh, there was a club that uh, we formed together with other people, and uh, that was for extracurriculum activities for children. And this was a book, uh, a Fear for Children, that was one of the first, maybe, in the whole area. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Uh, attend and uh, Satind is a huge supporter, of course, of children's books, especially in the Arabic language. So thank you very much for everything you're doing. Uh, this uh, is one of the activities. This is for planting trees and what we named Ghabat al-Atfal, Children's Forest, on the way to the Dead Sea. Wonderful. Thank you, Satind. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about the women's association that you are active with. This is uh, the uh, YW um, um, association, and that was uh, the first floral show that we had and, uh, then. And I was uh, the responsible person for the committee. Here is late Queen Zane, uh, my sister-in-law, sister of my husband, and the mother, of course, of King Hussein. She was... Uh, um, she came to open the exhibition at uh, this event. Thank you, Satin. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about your interest also in uh, discovering uh, the region, discovering uh, archaeology, the history of the region. Tell us a bit about this trip. It's very special because you went with your teacher. That trip we went to while, while I was still studying uh, at the college in Beirut. We went on a trip to Egypt and with the American professor who was an Egyptologist. He was fascinated with, to see Egypt for the first time and to explain everything for, for us. Of course, I learned so much from him. But before that, I had this uh, interest in archaeology. As a child, we used to go everywhere with a, a tutor that my father put for us to help us with our studying. And he would take us to climb over these uh, ruins and columns uh, scattered all over Amman. So this interest continued with me. And uh, of course, I was involved 
in the making of, I was really a pusher for the National Museum, the Archaeological Museum that is called now Amman Jordan Museum for Archaeology. Thank you so much. It's a beautiful museum indeed. And again, and of course, a, yeah. through the handicrafts, through the handicrafts, I was keen to have replicas for, uh, from museum pieces to represent Jordan for the Jordanians and for people who visit Jordan. And I'm proud. This is the Navatian pottery on the left. We even got the same clay same thing, same technique like the Nabataeans to produce these little pieces. And all the designs around them are uh, from the Nabataean designs. And these, of course, are various spots from uh, various periods. Wonderful. And of course, this is very important for the local industry and for tourists who can purchase or acquire something historical from uh, Jordan on their way back home. And your interest in uh, and in, 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 uh, flowers and plants and what is Yeah, of course, I have an interest in nature. I have this interest in flowers. And again, uh, it was the Kibana Club that was established in Jordan, right? a chapter uh, affiliated to the Kibana uh, Club in Japan. And here in the, on the left, uh, I was attending a conference in South Africa, and this is an arrangement that I put at the show. In the other picture, it is a teacher. They often come here to give us classes, and then we continue studying and working. And uh, I do my studying at home. I always have flower arrangements at home. Um, I want to move to this, uh, this image. I, I think this is you on, on the right side of the picture. Yeah. This is one, I wouldn't say one, it's a, a, a bit of a crazy idea of mine. I have this land in, uh, next to the Dead Sea and I cleared, it was all full of rocks and I cleared the land, I made a little uh, pool and I used to go enjoy it tremendously with friends and families and I still do. Uh, Sitin, the, the last time I saw you is uh, when early early this year. In fact, uh, we were uh, February. <laughs> we were in New York in February Indeed. Indeed. for an opening of an exhibition. So I wanted to share yes. this image with you, which I didn't show you before. Picture yeah. of my students uh, who came from Boston with one of your paintings. So we will be talking about your art in the upcoming slide. But tell us about the gentleman in the middle. Yeah, this is the son of um, Ustaz Muhammad Osman, who is the conductor of the National Orchestra in Jordan, a fine musician, a pianist, and his son studied music. And he is now a fine musician. And I met him in New York. I was thrilled to see him conducting your orchestra here. And we have a lot of these uh, excellent musicians who graduated from the National Music Conservatory which I was responsible in the making under the umbrella of Queen Noor Hussain. That's really wonderful that uh, one of the musicians that uh, you had a hand in, uh, in training and educating uh, by setting up the conservatory ended up performing in the exhibition. Okay, now we're going to look a little bit about art, finally. We'll talk Finally, about we got to the art. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we'll talk about art. So uh, we want to, of course, begin with your friendship and your relationship and your tutelage under the great Fakhr Nissa. So I'm going to be uh, going over the pictures as you speak. But tell us, uh, Sitind, about how you first encountered the great uh, Turkish-born artist Fakhr Nissa Zaid. Of course, uh, she is a member of the family and my, I met her through the family. Then she asked me to go to her house. She had an open house, a big reception, when she decided to come and live in Jordan. She said, I want you to be a hostess in my house to explain about my work to my guests. Of course, I was a bit uh, scared. I don't know much about her work. I was not so much uh, into art. How would I explain? So uh, we went, two or three of us, I can't remember, Princess Majda was one and me another. And she explained to us, next day it was a good um, social event for everybody in Amman. 
She said, you come tomorrow to me. We went to her and she was sitting there with pens and papers and she said, I want to teach you to paint. I said, what do you mean you want to teach us to paint? And uh, there it was. The first picture you showed uh, was uh, us sitting in her studio, working there. We worked in her studio for almost four years. Mm -hmm. Then we produced some very beautiful work. She would just comment, she would not instruct. I'm, I'm, I am proud to say that she would say, yes, continue. And that was in French, always she would say these comments. And here I'm sitting there with her in the background. I believe that is Fofo in the front, maybe I'm not so sure. We have very few pictures in that room. It was so tiny, but we were four or five of us working on the canvases. You can't believe it, how we did that. And then we had always this uh, sumptuous uh, morning coffee before and after the, <laughs> the session, usually before. And here I had my children coming to pick me up, coming uh, some of them at nursery school to uh, take me back home. And uh, Princess Vakrinissa was always very helpful and very motherly and very uh, friendly. And here we are eating her beautiful sandwiches and her cake. Tell us about this image on the right, the painting. Right here, I'm standing uh, next to this uh, painting that I really cherish, but it doesn't belong to me anymore. And then the first one on the left, uh, I, we were sitting with uh, Fahri Nessa, Princess Fahri Nessa, in her uh, drawing room and the painting behind us. I took it back home and I worked more on it. And then there it is finished. Fantastic. And more images. Um... Yeah, all these occasions in her house, they were like um, uh, unknown stories for us, unknown events for people of a man and for us as well in, the, in her salon, in her bedroom, again in the hospital. We, I was with her for 15 years. I was very close to her. She was very close to me and to my family. And I always continue to take her my work. And at the very end, before she passed away, she would say, continue, continue, my darling. You are doing something very original. You have one of these paintings, the one she said, this is very original, my darling, continue. See, uh, at that time she used to come to me, I would uh, ask her over to my house, we would have uh, lunch and she would see the children and come with all the sweets and the gifts she would bring. And then she would look at my work and she says, darling, continue, this is very, very original. So I was always proud of what she said. Even when we had this big exhibition here, when the school uh, of Ernissa, the Institute of Ernissa Zaid, Royal Institute of Ernissa Zaid, had the big exhibition in Amman, it was a very big event. And I think it was a turning point somehow in the ev uh, evolution, if you would like to say, not revolution, I don't want to say revolution, evolution in the art scene in Jordan. And she chose these paintings that we did over the years, over six years. And I was so proud. She put three of my paintings on the left, on the top. She had this uh, portrait of uh, late Sayyidna. And uh, my three paintings were around that portrait. And then her other portrait, or so I think, on the right. Uh, I was very, very pleased to have them chosen to be on that central focal point. And then the others. Uh, he we can go back to that. Go ahead. Uh, well, in this one, uh, I have made this portrait with my children, myself, and my children. Here is Queen Noor and this Varenessa uh, taking her around to see the exhibition. And then she patroned um, all my exhibition when she was still alive. And the lower one, it was one exhibition, and the other one, another exhibition. And I was so happy and proud of the uh, rights up 
or the introduction to my exhibition, the way she would write about my work. We will be talking about that in a few seconds. And there is a- Here it is in Paris. It was, she took us to the uh, Salon d'Autonne in Paris. She picked uh, three of my paintings. This is one of them. And uh, her auto, the famous auto portrait of her in the South. Um, in fact, uh, Fakhr Nissa had written uh, more than once about your work here. She says um, that there is uh, the ultimate ascension with grandeur and aesthetics and plastics and non-stop explosive radiance is what she wrote in 1984. I was uh, very proud to read that. <laughs> I was extremely proud. I thought she gave me more than I deserved. He uh, pinpointed uh, something very important about uh, nature. Nature for me is not what, uh, of course, it's the things that surround us and the things what, that we see always around us. But for me, it's not the nature as such. She always told me, and never work outside your studio unless you want to sketch a little bit or do things like that. You have to work in your studio, store what you have in your mind, in your subconscious, etc. And then with the passing of the time and my attachment to nature, I realized I'm not looking at nature to represent nature. I'm digging inside nature. I want to know the origins. I want to know the ultimate. What is there behind it? The, the, like in my last exhibition, I mentioned this no horizon. There is no an end to what you see and what you experience when you are thinking about nature. I always feel that nature is inside me. I'm there and I'm trying, it's in my mind, in my subconscious, name it whatever you want. And then things come intuitively with my work. Talking again about nature, I talk about the nature of my country. It's so diversified in this small area. We have four, maybe five uh, geographical zones, uh, zones. We have the lowest point in the earth. Then we have the desert. We have the, uh, the sea. We have uh, the forest and the topography, the geology, the fauna and flora and so different from one area to the other. So I always say, why do I move from one thing to the other? In fact, I'm not moving. I'm move, moving in the sense I'm continuing. It's not an interruption. I finish one thing and then I move into the other and then to the other. People at the beginning, many, many art critics and some very important art critics realized that this is my nature and this is how I work. And, uh, because this is me, <laughs> I can't say more. And she pinned out this thing at the beginning of my work at 84. I was very, uh, very uh, thrilled when I reread it after many years. I said, she knew what am I, I am. Said, uh, Hind, in fact, Fakhr uh, Nissa seems to be continuously impressed by your work four years after this. She writes, uh, my Hind, how did you manage to capture the light, the form, the strength, and the dream? Ah, what a romance you have created to all of us. Well, uh, you explain it now, <laughs> it's your turn, but I was really thrilled to read that. I was, and when I go back to read it every now and then, I try to analyze it, looking at my work, and, uh, uh, I'm flattered. Sithind, I think uh, you answered the question yourself a few minutes ago. You said that the topography of Jordan, the, 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 the fact that Jordan hosts all these different zones, the light that Jordan is exposed to, I think really is something that you appreciated and something that you channeled into your art. So maybe that even, is- Even, yeah. Even, even in the desert, nobody believes that there are so many colors in the desert. If you are standing at sunset and look thoroughly on the horizon, I couldn't believe my eyes when the first time I was concentrating and I saw all these variant colors. 
yeah, I would see the violet, I would see the darker violet, then I would see green and blue, and the, but I, I'm, I'm sure I saw all these colors, and everybody would say, what would you see in the desert? In fact, I have many of these paintings that were created from the things I saw in the desert. That's really beautiful. Uh, we will now be taking uh, a few uh, uh, trips with you around the world, beginning with this image. This was taken in the UAE in Abu Dhabi. In the 88, yeah, in 88, one exhibition I had here. This was during the life, actually, of uh, Fakhr Nisa Zaid, I believe. So was it organized yes. by her? Yes, no, 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 she did not organize it. I, uh, I had uh, the opportunity to make this exhibition there, and uh, I believe it was a very successful exhibition there. And this is a postcard or a, a document from an exhibition you had in the US? No, no, that was in, the, in Washington. Uh -huh. uh, we went to the exhibition uh, for the new museum. Fakhrinissa was very interested in that museum. It's the third muse first museum that uh, exhibits for only women, and it's called a Museum, museum of Women Artists. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, I was uh, participating in, the, in that exhibition, and they called me to tell me, we are choosing this painting to print it as a postcard for the benefit of the museum. Of course, I said, with all my pleasure to have this, it was very flattering for me. And this is the back of the postcard, and that is a very beautiful painting I always cherished. It is, of course, it will remind you of Petra. Now you will see that, Sultan. That's right. It does, it does remind me of Petra. Uh, uh, these are, this is the, the photo of the exhibition in Washington, but on the right, this is you yeah. in Paris. In Paris, walking, going to the Hotel de Ville. It was an exhibition, Jordanian exhibition. It, it was called Voyage en Jordanie. We were walking, uh, me and my eldest daughter, Nofa, rushing to get to the museum, to the opening at the Hotel de Ville. Wonderful. Uh, this is here a collection of images, first showing um, uh, the, the uh, Queen uh, uh, Rania on the top left, is that correct? Yes, this is at the National Museum here in Amman, and that uh, painting is one of mine. And then the second one, that is Gallery 14, and one opening of an exhibition. And uh, the third one, Again, this is a painting, a big painting. The light is not good in it, uh, unfortunately, but I cherish this uh, painting and I call it soaring. It is this fire down in the, the, for a sunset, I don't know what it is, with the, this uh, black uh, part on the top. But the black is not black, it's full of uh, surprises. Sit, uh, Hint, can you tell us a little bit about these paintings on the bottom left, the ones where the, the yellow and the blue? Yeah, I had uh, many important reviews on that. In fact, one of the reviews was by uh, uh, Gerbrandt. If you are, I'm sure you are uh, familiar with uh, some of these names in Paris. He was one of the main art critics in Paris in the 60s and 70s. And uh, he owned a very important a gallery there, and he came to visit me. He was a friend of Fahrenissa. He came to Amman after uh, she passed uh, away, and uh, he came to visit me at home. Um, I invited him to lunch, and I started showing him some of the work. I haven't finished the series then. And he said, show me, show me more of these. And I kept showing him, and uh, lunch was getting cold, and the food was <laughs> I think, I don't know what. And at the end, he said, Madame, permettez-moi. I said, what? I spoke a bit of French with him. I said, what? He wanted to write about this work. I said, you ask my permission to say, permettez-moi. Uh, and he wrote this wonderful article, critique about me, my work, and this in particular. That's beautiful. Uh, that's a tend we will be visiting your studio with you now, beginning with your early studio here 
uh, on the left in your previous house, if I'm not mistaken. That little tiny little studio, we used to work there. At times we used to be five artists working together on top of each other. It was two meters by maybe three meters or less. We managed here, I was going to somewhere, I don't know, I was wearing this dress. And then, and the others, I always have uh, artists working with me in the studio. I feel this interaction between me and the other artists are, is very important. Uh, each one would work alone, then we comment about each other's work, and uh, we continue like this, we stay hours and hours, and then we eat, we chat, we listen to music, and we produce good work. And I'm still doing this. Incidentally, Fakhrinissa, uh, before she passed away, she asked, she asked me to promise her something. And uh, I said, yes, Siti, what do you want me? We always addressed her as Siti. This is uh, something in the family we do for the elderly people, older people or whatever. And she said, I want you to promise me to open your house to artists the way I open my house to artists. I said, Siti, sorry, I will not promise you. And she kept insisting. I said, please, don't ask me something that I might not do. Last year, the year before, I said, oh my God, but I'm doing what she was asking me to do without uh, feeling that I'm, but it is here we are. Tomorrow, in fact, I have a group of young artists and artists my age, they are coming to work in my studio here in Amman. Uh, it's a tend in fact, sometimes you have quite young artists joining. Very, you. very young. And my friends, uh, my age group friends, me keep joking um, with me saying, oh, you have these tiny little friends that come to work with you. But ask Hayat, Hayat, uh, um, Hindia is one of them and she's doing a good job. She is, of course, she can be my granddaughter, not my daughter, but... Uh, my daughter, whatever, but they come, all age groups, they come to my studio and uh, I hope I'm encouraging them and pushing them into this area of creativity. And, and who is this young child in the picture with you? That is my young, <laughs> my granddaughter who is named after me and she is a little hand and they always come to work with me but uh, her eldest sister is uh, even this. Uh, she, I don't know how uh, how talented is this one, but the eldest is quite talented. Mm, She's in art classes, and she used to work in my studio as a baby, and later on. But now she is uh, trained with other teachers. Wonderful. Uh, so, Tind, we will finally be looking at some of your artwork. In fact, we we spend so much time looking or t talking about your personal life, but I'd like to talk a little bit about what inspires you. I mean, you talk about nature a lot. Is this something I'm seeing in some of the artworks here? Yeah, of course, it is nature. If you look at the blues, you would see the sea, the sky, whatever you want to see. And on the ones on the left, if you take a mi microscope and look at certain things, you would see this it is there in nature. So I'm not inventing nature, but I'm putting in it in a creative way. You, the painting should talk about itself. The truth is in the painting. If you can see it, then you have understood what I, am, I need to say in the painting. Thank you. Um, this is a different series maybe from the late 80s and early 90s. Yes, but before this, there was this horizontal line in the desert I was telling you about. There are some paintings, probably you have them on the, uh, the screen below. And I worked with the horizontal line for a very long time. And I made, produced good works with this horizontal line. And then gradually the horizontal line started taking a circular shape started moving into a more like this painting on the right, started moving into organic forms. And from the organic forms, it turned into the 
big paintings that you showed me in front of the yellow and the blue and the red. I was talking about them. So it is a, a continuous movement uh, in my work that, that there is a very important thread that connects one thing to the other. And then if you look at the landscape in the middle, the colors are not natural. Natural or not natural, this is not important, but there the colors talk for themselves. And then they are maybe the image of uh, a landscape in what we see in French, l'au-delà. They are not here, they are from somewhere else. And this is what I mean when I see about nature, that it is inside me and uh, it comes out spontaneously, intuitively, if you like. Uh, and uh, they are different from the representational thing. I, th I think this is the... Uh, this, this is, is one of... Them. Yeah, these are the horizontal. These are the big landscapes. Yeah. And this is Jordan and Spring, by the way. I, I see these colors. Maybe some people would see these colors, but not to everybody. But I see these colors in spring in Jordan. They are not exactly representing the things. The colors are making the spaces and the areas. And this is very important for me. The color gives the, or gives the order. You see it again here, it's the same. And some German art critic told me, uh, listen, Mrs. Nasser, he used to call me, this uh, painting you should always have in your own collection. And he, do, he named uh, something like 13 ones at the time, in 88 he was with me, uh, Dr. Becker, and uh, he said, these paintings should always be yours. Don't sell them, don't give them, uh, give them away. And uh, he thought very highly of them. They are beautiful works. Uh, I told him, you, you know, uh, this uh, somebody important, a collector, <laughs> said in this painting. And, <laughs> and uh, well, it is in his collection, never mind, uh, as if it is in my own collection. That is true. This is uh, the work that we are proudly showing in the US and the touring exhibition uh, taking shape and uh, I want to, of course, uh, acknowledge uh, uh, Suha Lillas, who uh, helped us acquire uh, this work. Um, can you tell us a little bit about this work? The title also is quite interesting for me. The title, the way you put it, is a bit misleading for me. It's not a specific area in Jordan. If I want to say it is because the colors are a mixture of different areas, when you say that it, I would say the Jordan Valley, but I wouldn't think of the pink with the Jordan Valley. So it is a combination of a variety of areas. It is an area in your mind. It's not an actual area. It's something that you have collected, you have uh, cherished, you have absorbed, and there it is in your subconscious. It will come out intu intuitively, thinking or not thinking. And when I work, the thing that really gives me the command is the color. The color is the master, and it decides the painting for me. It's not my hand, it's not my eye, it's not my brain, it's not my subconscious, I don't know what it is, but the color usually guides me in the painting. It's a thing that reminded me of the quote we opened the talk with, where you say, I create my own reality, my experimentation with colors and forms is endless. So this reminded me of... Um, Thank you for reminding me with that and that with this painting. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you, Sit. Uh, and uh, this is also some of the most beautiful work you have created. Um, tell us a little bit about these works. They, they remind me of these crevices, these uh, almost tunnels that you see in, uh, in the mountainous region. Around well, well, that one on the left, was the thing that initiated the whole series. I have three of them. And I happened to be in New York and I was lucky to meet uh, Leo Castelli. Of course, you know who was Leo Castelli in, uh, in New York. He was the maker of artists there. And he pointed out that was, um, I had only three of these. And he said, 
this is very interesting. I said, thank you so much. And then he looked at my landscapes and he said, this is interesting, but your landscape, you should continue doing your landscape. You have something else in your landscape. And again, I was very pleased to hear that. When I told you about the horizontal lines turning into uh, biological, bi um, uh, biological shapes, the round, and then the vertical, that was the beginning of the vertical, the two in the middle and the one on the right. Uh, that was the vertical. That led to the big ones that you showed earlier with the yellow around them. So it is this movement between one period and the other that carries itself, I would say, automatically. And then I feel I make the theory, I exhaust the, my ideas with the theory, and then I move into something else. But making these big canvases would not stop me at, from doing smaller ones, smaller formats on paper, with ink, with pencil, with whatever charcoal. And simultaneously, I would be working on this and on the other. Thank you, Marie. Um, this is also another interesting period, Satind. Well, this, of course, the influence of the graffiti in the desert. We have a lot of these rocks scattered all over Jordan in the eastern desert from north to south. I saw some of these impressions. In fact, the ones on the right are almost a replica or drawings from what I saw in the desert. And this one on the left, <laughs> they, they were talking to each other in all times through these images. And we have hundreds, thousands of them scattered all over Jordan. Uh, I got to the idea, the idea got to me not I got to the idea, I don't know. And then I, I did a big series with work like this. It is with ink and uh, with a bit of printing at the same time. So I uh, got uh, these images. You can see the camel, the gazelle, and you see the, um, some people on top. And then their instruments, they were not done this way on the rock itself. So I arranged them in this different thing. We, and this is a gazelle on the other one, and the little lizard in the middle. Somebody shouting <laughs> at the gazelle, I don't know. Um, I just wanted to say that I feel your relationship with, uh, with nature, whether it's the plants or whether it's archaeology, whether it's the, the, the wider um, geography of Jordan is, is really something that uh, I see uh, repeatedly in all your work. So it's something that you've cherished with you since childhood. Yes. Uh, I always had, we were uh, brought up to love our country, to admire what we have in our country, even though it was a tiny little country at the time. Uh, we went around, we saw a lot. I was brought up in a very patriotic house. My father was very patriotic. My mother was very patriotic. We are Arabs and we want to stay Arabs. We want to stay in our country. We want to maintain our country. And uh, it's one way of loving my country, it shows in that. And, uh, even when after I got married, the same feeling and the same uh, thought was always there with me and my husband, my late husband, that this is our country, this is our land, our culture. We have always to get uh, hold of it, to let massacre, if you like to say, in Arabic. And of course, uh, Sultan, you are very interested in this area, area other than painting. You are very interested in Arab culture and try to uh, keep it, preserve it, uh, pass it to the next generation, uh, and try to, to, defend it, to defend it against so many enemies, the enemies of new cultures and new civilizations. We are I'm not against the new things, but I'm against destroying my own culture and just uh, 
get attached to different cultures. So these are, they, they, they come in my work, they show always in my work. But nature is nurture, whether it is Jordan or not. And I think that's a uh, beautiful um, uh, way to uh, wrap up the, uh, the majlis and the talk. Uh, yes, uh, I am interested in uh, Arab culture, but it's because of people like you. It's because Thank of you. pioneers like your good self who really have uh, highlighted the beauty of the Arab countries, the, uh, the, the, whether it's nature or archaeology or history or antiquities or handicrafts, something that you have championed since the early 70s. It's something that is so beautiful and I'm so glad that you have uh, kept that uh, fire alive in the sense. Inshallah, inshallah. Inshallah. We inshallah. Sit in. Thank you. Um, Thank you so I, much. I want to, uh, I want to say that uh, I am ending the majlis. The official part of the majlis is ending now.